Hello and welcome everyone to this one more edition of Company Now Lectures. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about section 132, which speaks about National Financial Reporting Authority. National Financial Reporting Authority, which we also we abbreviate it as NFRA. NFRA. Now, NFRA is a separate body which is now constituted under, under section 132 of Companies Act 2013. Now, now, who will constitute the NFRA? The provision provides for the central government to constitute NFRA. Okay. What is NFRA? NFRA is a quasi-judicial authority or quasi-judicial body which regulates the matter relating to accounting and auditing, which regulates the matters relating to accounting and auditing. Now, when we speak about regulation, that means it is an regulatory body. For example, other examples are SEBI, IRDA for their respective uh, fields. In terms of accounting and auditing, regulatory body will be the NFRA, which has been given the powers by section 132 of the Companies Act 2013. And it will be constituted by the, it will be constituted by the central government. Okay. Now, what will this NFRA be primarily responsible for? It will be, first of all, responsible for monitoring and enforcing, monitoring and enforcing compliance of the auditing and accounting standards. So the first responsibility that has been provided to NFRA is monitoring and enforcing the compliance of auditing and accounting standards. That means it will look into whether the accounting standards and the auditing standards are being followed by the qualified professionals when they are discharging their duties. Okay, And it will also look at the quality of the professionals associated with ensuring such compliances. It will also look at the quality of professions and professionals associated with the ensuring of such compliances. So this is the broad framework. So this is a broad scope under which an NFRA will be working into. Okay. Now let us get into little bit of specifics. We should also know that the accounting standards and standards of auditing, which is the SAS, are now recommended by the NFRA directly to the central government. And upon the recommendation of the NFRA, central government will go ahead and publish the same. Okay, so NFRA shall give the recommendation on AS and SAS. AS means accounting standard, SAS means standards of auditing to the central government. And the central government will prescribe it on the recommendation of the NFRA. Okay, now what are the important objectives of NFRA? It will be, the first one will be to make recommendations on formulation of accounting and auditing policies and standards. And these recommendations are made to the central government. Okay. Second is monitor and enforce the compliance with the accounting standards, monitor and enforce the compliance with the auditing standards. That is what we had gone through in our first slide itself. And it will oversee the quality of service of the professionals associated with the with ensuring such compliance, which majorly are professions into chartered accountancy. Finally, it is also important, it is also uh, responsible or it is also an objective to perform such other functions, which may be as prescribed time to time by the government, that is central government, by some notification or any amendment in the Companies Act 2013. Now, we all know now by now that central government will constitute the NFRA. But what will be the composition or the constitution of the NFRA? Let us go through this. NFRA will be composed by one, which is a chairperson. There will be one chairperson of the NFRA. And this person has to be of eminent and expertise, eminent knowledge and expertise in the field of accounting, auditing, finance and law. So the chairperson will be appointed by the central government and the chairperson shall be an eminent personality with expertise in accounting, auditing, finance and law. Other than that, there will be 15 
separate members who will be who can be appointed by the central government so members shall not exceed 15 shall not exceed 15 and such members can be appointed on part time basis as well as full time basis so what we have to remember in terms of composition is one chairperson and not exceeding 15 members who can be part time or full time okay now this chairperson who is nominated by the central government shall make a declaration regarding conflict of interest or lack of independence that means the chairperson shall be a person who does not have any conflict of interest when it comes to these particular fields and he has complete independence and is not associated with any company or any organization as such okay so he should be a person who has no conflict of interest or lack of independence and that shall be made by an certification or declaration provided by the chairperson himself so it is a self declaration that has to be given by the chairperson okay now there will be separate divisions of nfra which will be prepared or which will be created in different different regions so each division of nfra shall be presided over by the chairperson okay and there shall also be an executive body of the nfra there shall also be created an executive body of nfra who will be looking into day to day duties and efficient discharge of duties of the nfra okay now one more important point is that central government may appoint a secretary for on such other employees also to ensure that there is efficient performance of functions of the nfra so nfra will have the chairperson members an executive body as well as the central government if need be may appoint a secretary as well as such other employees which are required for administrative or record keeping purposes okay this will only efficiently ensure that nfra's performance is much better okay now the next point is nfra's books of accounts and audit nfra itself will have to maintain its books of accounts and audit these books of accounts also now this books of accounts has to be maintained in consultation with the comptroller and auditor general of india comptroller and auditor general of india who is also known as c and ag of india who is also known as c and ag of india also this books of accounts needs to be prepared on an annual basis and it will be audited by the c and ag that is the comptroller and auditor general of india now this audit will happen on a specified interval and the audit report shall be submitted to the central government on an annual basis similarly on the completion of the books of accounts preparation by the uh, by the uh, nfra by the nfra the nfra will prepare an annual report of all the activities during the financial year and forward the copy to the central government so the cndg will conduct the audit and the audit report will be submitted to the central government similarly the nfra will also prepare an annual report and submit it to the central government on an annual basis okay now once both the reports that is annual report as well as the audit report is received by the central government then the central government will lay the reports before each Now each house of the parliament. Okay, so this is about NFRS books of accounts and audit. I hope this is clear. Now the next part is what is the jurisdiction or powers and imposition of penalties that is provided for by the NFRA. So as we have understood so far, NFRA is a regulatory body. So it has powers to investigate. It has to powers to investigate into matters of professional misconduct committed by the members of. form of his members or form of cas registered under the chartered accountant act 1949 okay so wherever an reporting is made by an application by the central government or the nfra itself has come to knowledge that there is some misconduct being conducted by any particular individual chartered accountant or a form of chartered accountant Then in that case, it has the power to investigate such 
individual chartered accountant or the firm of chartered accountants and if it finds that it is guilty then it has powers to impose penalties on the same okay the powers of the nfra will be the same as the powers of the civil court okay now if the nfra finds if the nfra finds in its investigation that the particular chartered accountant or the firm of chartered accountant was guilty then it it can pass an order imposing a penalty or even has the power to debar the member of the firm. now what is the penalty amount that can be uh, passed by the nfra first of all nfra in terms of individual can give a minimum of 1 lakh minimum of 1 lakh and maximum up to 5 times the fees received as penalty also for firm it the minimum amount will be 5 lakh and maximum of 10 times the fees received as part of penalty also the nfra if it feels need be it can debar the member or firm from being appointed from being appointed as a auditor or internal auditor and from performing any valuation as a valuation officer under section 240 such type of debarment will be for a minimum period of 6 months and for a maximum period of 10 years so this is the power which the which the nfra has in case it finds any professional that is chartered accountant or firm of chartered accountants guilty of any misconduct of their professional duties okay so that's it from me for section 132 which is nfra i hope you have understood this particular provision very well go through this lecture for a couple of times it is a very simple provision but it may come in your exams so that's it from me in this particular lecture do take care of yourself do subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed to this channel take care bye bye